So I am extremely happy to introduce our speakers, Mr. Prasad Kumar. With over 12 years in the overseas education space, Prasad has helped hundreds of students through his mentorship. As an expert on studying in the USA, Prasad is able to guide his students through every minute detail of the process for bachelor's, master's, MBA, and even PhD. He has a well-diversified knowledge with expertise in Canadian, Australian, UK, and European education systems as well. Joining him today is Aditya, his uh, colleague, who again is an expert in the field of study abroad. So uh, thank you, Prasad and Aditya, and welcome to the study abroad series at Elpro International School. It is a pleasure to host you both. Over to you guys. Thank you so much, Suganda. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, connecting with students of the IB because uh, I myself was an IB student and I went abroad and went through the entire journey. So I'm really excited actually to speak with everybody here about uh, both the ACT and the SAT, right? Uh, and I mean, Prasad specifically, he has uh, tons of experience helping a variety of students on a variety of uh, tests, including the ACT and SAT. So yeah, this is going to be a great session. But before we get started, uh, I just wanted to hear from everybody, right? Uh, guys, uh, can you let me know in the chat, uh, where are you in your uh, journey to study abroad or in your schooling? Uh, are you guys currently uh, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade students? Uh, what are your uh, future aspirations, basically? 9th grade, awesome. 11th, IB, 12th, 10th, awesome. Great mix of... Uh, Great, great, all great. This is great to see. Okay, uh, so just very quickly, I'll share my screen. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, guys, today, uh, what we're going to be speaking about is the ACT and SAT, uh, the various sections and test durations that uh, will be there for each of these tests, how they're scored, and uh, what the grading systems are like, how you can prepare for the test, and what limitations you might be facing. And also how you can register, just the basic of where, where you can go through that. We'll also speak about how the ACT and SAT compare, as well as uh, various test prep tools you could use to make your uh, test prep easier, right? And finally, we'll also do a Q&A, but uh, don't hesitate to ask questions in the chat. We'll be happy to answer them there or uh, live or at the end of the session, right? So feel free to ask us questions at any point during the session. Uh, that being said, uh, what are you guys planning to do next, right? Uh, are you guys planning on uh, studying uh, further in India once you complete your 11th and 12th grade? Uh, are you planning on maybe taking some vocational experience or are you all looking to study abroad? Uh, I, I, I assume that a lot of you will say study abroad because uh, even when uh, my class, class was going on in IB, which was back in 2012, so a while ago, uh, I know a lot of students do intend to go abroad because the program itself is uh, tailored to that. But I'd love to hear from you. As I see in the chat, most of you are saying, undergrad in the US or study abroad. Uh, awesome, yeah, pretty much uh, what was the case with my school as well. Uh, that being said, uh, which country are you looking at? I know one person said the US, but uh, let me know, uh, are people exploring other countries like Germany, Spain, France, even Japan, a uh, variety of options. Uh, anybody looking uh, outside the US? Okay, Canada, Germany, UK, awesome. A uh, lot of responses. Oh, Singapore as well, great to hear, and Australia, Korea as well. That's great to hear. Okay, uh, awesome. So, Prasad, uh, over to you. Uh, I'd love to hear from you on the uh, ACT. Definitely. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. And thank you, Suganda, for the lovely introduction, which is my favorite part always. And thank you, Aditya, for the being a co-host and a great colleague to work with. Uh, let's, let's, first of all, uh, let's understand what is the test is that. Now, today we are going to discuss about the ACT and a SAT. Now let's let's go in depth and let's dive, dive what is ACT, understand what is the test and what is the, the importance of this test in the higher education for the universities or maybe the country. We are not talking about each country here. We are talking in general. We're talking about the importance of this test and we're talking about the, the importance of getting in a particular dream university or, or a particular kind of a university that you are targeting into. Now let's let's dive into the ACT. Let's let's first uh, talk about what is ACT. The ACT is, is an American college test. This is an entrance test to get an admission or we can say uh, it's a standardized test to get admission into the US universities and college for the undergrad program. And it's, it's, a, it's a standardized test for admission. 
and ACT or we can say American college states consist of four sections. One is English, second is a science, second, uh, third is a reading and fourth section is a mathematics. And we have another section called essay, which is an optional, which is an optional. So it's, it's purely depend upon the student, whether he wants to opt for the essay session or whether he want. And again, it's depend upon the university. Now we have to check the requirement, whether the university is really requiring to take us as essay or not. And now let's talk about the fees. The fees varies from uh, 168.5 to $188. If you're opting with essay, the cost of the fees is 188. And if you're opting for non essay or optional essay, then it's 165, sorry, 168.5. And if you need more information and how to register for the exam, here we have shared a link where you can register yourself and you can understand what is the importance of ACT or, or how, how the dates are available and different test centers and about the, the, the program of ACT. Yes. Now let's, let's talk about the structure. Now, as I said that we have a four sections in ACT. The one is English. In English, we uh, I'll I'll talk about the duration of the exam. It's three uh, it's three it's two hours of fifty five minutes. Uh, and uh, if you see about the four sections, English, science, mathematics, writing, and reading. Okay, now let's go with the English section. Here are, we have seventy five questions, and the duration of the test is forty five minutes. So it's divided in four parts. So English. 75 questions and you have a 45 minutes to answer all the questions. Second is the mathematics. Again, uh, 40 questions and 35 minutes. The same with the mathematics. You have a 60 questions and you have a 60 minutes to answer all the questions. And the same with the reading, 45 questions and 35 minutes. Here, uh, English and writing, once you are done with the English and writing, uh, sorry, reading section, you get a 10 minutes break. And the same with the mathematics and the science. So you get a 10 minutes break in the each section. Got it. Uh, Kumar, uh, sorry, Prasad, uh, would you mind uh, telling us more about the kind of questions that could be asked uh, during these sessions? Yes. In English, we have a reading. Uh, uh, they have a passages available. So they'll, they'll, they'll give a sh uh, essay and they'll, they'll share the instruction how to answer this question. And it's the same with the mathematics also. Uh, if if we talk about the mathematics section in ACT, it's it's more uh, advanced mathematics. It includes algorithm and trigonometry. Uh, it's it's more into the advanced. And uh, apart from your high school mathematics, you can see the algorithm and mathematics available in this section. So uh, so that's why it's it's advanced. If you feel that you are very good at the advanced mathematics level, then I'd always recommend to go with the ACT. Otherwise, there is other exam that we have. Science also again with a, a, a basic skill required with the science and English, you know, like chemistry or physics kind of a things. And right. that's and yes, and reading, you know, like it's a passage consists of uh, all the essays. Sorry, all all the, all the passage on a particular topic. Then you have to answer on that part. And and most important thing is that all all the sections are uh, sorry. Uh, it's it's a multi. Uh, and MCQs. So you have uh, options available there and you have to choose the best answer which suits that question. And, and most important, uh, again, with the writing section. Uh, yes, writing is, is an, one of the important aspects in this exam. They, 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 they want to understand what, what are the ideas that you have and how you analyze that part. And, and again, with the language, if, if you see the, uh, the scoring here, uh, ACT, though we, as we have the e, we have four sections and each section is uh, 36 marks. The ma maximum is 36 and your scale start with 1 to 36. Each section has the maximum scoring of 36 and overall the scoring is done on the basis of your four sections. The best score or the maximum score is 36 and the good, good score is 32 and the average score is in between 36 and like 28. This is the scoring of ACT. If you look at the top schools across the universities, if, if you see at MIT, Harvard, or, or, or any IV schools in the US, the minimum is 33 and the maximum can go to 36 of your ACT score. 
and the validity of the ACT score is five years. And you can see the total total attempt allowed in a year for a particular student. Um, I believe I believe that's twelve total attempts uh, in total. I, I think. Yes, but yes, and and we I personally feel that don't go with that many number of attempts because if you're attempting many times and you're ending with a low score, it, it's a negative impact. So try to minimize at least a three times or four times with the test. That is right. an important part. Would if you suggest course, that uh, students take the test more than once? Uh, yes, if you feel that your score is not matching to the particular dream university or the target university that you're looking at, then definitely. Right. So that's an important case. So understand and analyze and then take the test. Because it's take a lot of preparation for ACT. We need a lot of time also on that part. You have to invest a lot of time, a lot of uh, preparation is required, a lot of practice is required for that. Right. Um, uh, Prasad, somebody asked, how important is applying for SAT for students this year and next year? So, uh, yeah, Prasad, do you want to add your Yes, uh, we'll, we'll talk about SAT in the next slide. I'll definitely answer your question. Before that, let's let's finish what is ACT. Sure. Then we'll jump into the SAT. And I'll, I'll uh, I think, Ankita. Or, oh, yes. sorry, Ankita, I'll answer your question on the last q and session. Don't worry, I'm here to answer all the questions, whatever you have in your mind related to ACT, SAT, and the universities part. Now, uh, now we, we have analyzed and we got a feedback from the students or maybe the, from the mentor. So this, these are the tips that we have written in the slide. So please have a look into that and understand and uh, plan accordingly before you write your ACT. Right. Uh, but I think a few things that maybe we should uh, point out are uh, answering every question uh, since there are no negative markings, guys. So yeah. uh, I think a while back, the SAT in 20, uh, before 2016 had this system where negative marks uh, were provided for wrong answers. Uh, considering this is the ACT, they never had this system and they've uh, made it very easy for you to at least give it your best to just try every question. Uh, even if you don't know the answers to say 20% of the exam, answering them uh, just giving an answer gi gives you a chance of getting a few more points, right? And uh, when it comes to tests like these, which are highly competitive, uh, having just a couple more answers jumps you up in uh, your percentile scores, uh, which we'll also get to. But uh, that being said, ensure that uh, you're being precise with your work as well, because uh, these tests are graded uh, if, if written in person, these tests, uh, which the ACT is, uh, these tests will require you to use a pencil. And when you don't erase properly, uh, these are graded oftentimes by machines. So uh, what happens is they're not able to make the difference between what has been filled and erased. And if there's two answers on a specific answer, uh, it'll just mark it as wrong. Uh, it might ask it to go for re-evaluation, but it's better to always be safe and ensure that you're not uh, penciling in your answers too hard before you've actually, you know, decided that this is the answer I want to go with. And uh, once you're ready with the answer, you can go ahead and pencil it in properly or uh, you can erase it if you think this isn't the right answer. And finally, make sure you practice uh, at least at least once a week, uh, every week uh, for at least two months before the exam. Having as much practice in as possible just ensures that you go through a variety of type of questions and ensures that you don't uh, get uh, caught off guard by any uh, question that you weren't expecting or any type of question that, you know, uh, wasn't something that you practiced. Great. But uh, thank you, Aditya. I want to add a few things on the ACT part. Can you just move the slide? Yes. Right. Uh, as Aditya rightly said, please answer all the questions because there is no negative marking there. And before uh, answering any question, you have to read the question carefully then and attempt the answers. And as uh, Aditya rightly said, most important part is your practice. For any exam, the practice is play an important role. And there is no age limit to take an ACT. You're, if you are 13 plus, then you can always eligible to write ACT exam. There is no age limit and you can write as number of as many times. But as I say that, please restrict yourself to up to three or four times, not more than that. Because they, you know, see, always look at your average. So if you take many times, then they feel that, okay, the student is writing many times and 
is ending with a low score. You so do also you, have the option of uh, choosing not to submit your not scores. Not to send your scores. Yeah, so, don't, so don't, you can take a call accordingly. Yes, and don't so uh, don't send any negative uh, hints to the universities that okay, uh, this many times that you have attempted and but you ended with this score only. So don't, don't like. Uh, like most of the universities look into your uh, GPAs of your eighth, ninth, tenth, and your eleventh, or maybe if you have twelfth, that is an important part. Plus, uh, apart from your GPA or apart from your grade, your your test scores, ACT or SAT, play an important role to get an admission into that university. Plus, a scholarship. So, so keep in mind and always plan. And as I said, that you can also write in your eighth grade or ninth grade or eleventh grade or tenth uh, tenth grade. But uh, as, a, as as you ask me personally, then I can say that uh, write uh, or prepare for your ACT in your 11th standard, and as soon as you get your break in the month of May, try to give your exam in the month of June or July, which is which is an ideal time to give your ACT on that part. So most important, as Aditya and everyone says that practice makes man perfect. So make sure that you have more practice on the sessions or a test and. Give as many as test mock test you can. Awesome. Uh, also, another question: uh, Are these exams compulsory to give for the uh, for to get an admission at a university abroad? Yes. If you if you see at a particular country, then we have US and Canada. They they look into the major league about your ACT or a SAT. This this is and as they say, this is a minimum requirement to get an entire admission. We it as we said that is a standardized test to get admission into the U.S. universities for your undergrad program, irrespective of your major. That can be for your major can be humanities, arts, liberal arts, engineering, non-engineering, ma uh, management, anything, social work, anything, anything, irrespective of your major. This is the minimum requirement, and this test is conducted to judge your IQ level, and they and they want to understand whether you really. Able to handle the coursework that provided by the U.S. University. It's a simple math, or it's a simple ma matrix. They they want to judge you whether you can or you are able to, uh, and uh, or you are able to uh, pressure you. I mean, to say you are able to uh, take that pressure what university has in terms of their academics. So they want to see that, and they, which is a uh, most important part. So they analyze based on your scores whether you are able to. Take that many classes, or that kind of a pressure the university has in terms of their academic part. Um, Sahil, uh, Apurva, uh, you all both have very similar questions. Uh, I, I can add this that there are universities, uh, as Prasad mentioned, universities do want to see the amount of effort uh, you're putting into your academic uh, work, and these are strenuous exams. But uh, there are also some universities that will accept you without these scores, but your options are very limited. And that being said, uh, it's often better to go ahead and give the exam, even if you don't have the time to prepare, or uh, you know, if you're really late in the stage and you want to still go ahead and get more options, go ahead and give the exam. There are uh, there are ways. That you have a lot of uh, backing with the IB. There's a lot of uh, difficult English and uh, math courses. Uh, if you're especially if you're doing uh, something at a higher level. So you can go ahead and give the exam, get a base score at least. That will open up your options to apply to a variety of universities as well, right? Uh, when is an ideal time to give the ACT? Uh, as Prasad mentioned, uh, if you're in the eleventh grade, the best time would be to give it during your break between your two uh, years. Uh, it's a good time because one, you'll be preparing for the IB, uh, which again is very difficult math, very difficult English. So you do have a reason to prepare anyway. And yeah, it's a great time. Uh, but earlier the better, often, uh, so that you can see your scores. You can maybe give a couple of uh, re attempts, like Prasad mentioned. Too many is uh, not good, but uh, having a few uh, gives you the chance to actually prepare for the exam by actually giving the exam beforehand. Right? Uh, there are exam centers available in India. Uh, some uh, somebody has questioned that. Uh, there are exam centers definitely available. Uh, but uh, the SAT also offers it online, so you would be able to take it online as well. And mm -hmm. What about the APs? Uh, I believe these are uh, uh, advanced placement classes. Yes. Uh, Amek, could you? Uh, yeah. Yes. Now I, I want to answer answer Sahil's question. Yes, I totally agree. Because of the pandemic, most of the university have waived their requirement in terms of ACT or SAT. Uh, but even though you, now uh, the best part of these exams is that you 
you are telling the universities indirectly that you are very particular about your higher studies and you want you are uh, you are a uh, sincere and very serious students about your higher studies in the united states or canada this this will this exam will brighten your chances to get admission as well as, as the uh, scholarship part so even the pandemic is that there is an option available to write an exam yeah so please attempt your exam give a hint to the university that you are a serious student that is the mo- most important part and right. don't skip don't skip most likely there will be students that will apply with the scores so they will be more yes. competitive than you yeah. when they apply i i understand india is having a tough time with the covid but what about the other countries so yes. you have to tell the university that you are also standing in a race and this course will reach you in your dream school or a high school or a top ranking university with a good funding in the universities and yes idle time as i already say, said that keep prepare in your 11th standard as soon as you done with your 11th exams give your best shot for your act exams in in your sem break so this is an ideal time if you want to understand your basic then you can start at the time of your 10th standard but before starting of your 12th standard this is an ideal time to give your exams Awesome. Uh, uh, so, Amay is asking, what about uh, AP exams? Uh, would uh, would uh, that be something that uh, would help with the, uh, I guess, uh, yes. uh, registration? Yes, and yes. Uh, Aditya has already said that AP is an advanced placement test. This is uh, this exam will help you to get a few credits wave in the US universities. So, uh, we'll talk more about that also. Now, as uh, some uh, Sujata. Uh, Uh, mention a question like sad are getting cancelled from the last year yes i agree because of the pandemic the situation were out of control but now the situation is under control and i think the next sad available date is in the month of august and october and the dates are open and you can register yourself for the exams um just adding to uh, what prasad said about advanced placements uh, uh, i i don't know if you uh, know this but even the ib uh, does allow you to transfer credit so for example if you do bio hl like i did you if you have a bio class class in your undergrad you would be able to just claim those credits and complete that beforehand right is it asmi 30 is a, a really competitive act score uh, yes. it puts you in the top yes. uh, 80 percentile of yes. the grades 30 is a good score as i said that you know like uh, most of the you know see if you're looking at the top schools or maybe into the id schools they they the minimum is starts with a 32 and the maximum go to 36 if you come down to top 20 or 30 your 30 will be a acceptable score in the universities right uh, amay uh, i understand you're in the cb cbse uh, he was the one asking for advanced placement classes uh, so yeah definitely advanced placement classes will not only help you uh with getting better credits just like you would with the ib but uh i am not too aware whether the cbse allows you to transfer credits uh no, there only might ID, be only ib okay. allows you only ib allows you okay awesome uh shall we move ahead to the sat yes now let understand the sat uh this is also in one one of the type of entrance exam to get into the uh, universities across the globe for an undergraduate program not only the us even a uh, few universities in india they also look for your, your sat scores so as i said this is a minimum requirement to get into the admission yes uh, okay can i answer the question or we can continue here uh, I'll, i'll answer rupali question uh, yes the exam duration is 3 hours and if you're taking essay it's 3 hours 55 minutes uh and the validity of both the score is 5 years yeah your scores are valid for the another 5 years from the test date okay yes the is quality assessment test is a standardized test to get admission into the different universities across the globe not only the us canada singapore uh, or or uh, germany or or uk not all the universities will ask for a sat but if you see the broader prospectives us and canada are very particular about your uh, the test yes you can take both but the uh, but we recommend you to send any of the uh, one which is the best you feel that uh now okay there is a question uh, uh, yes does the essay have to be a specific topic they will share a topic with you that can be issue or that can be argument 
but you will have okay. options. You have an option there. Yes, as I said that your test, uh, Shreesh, uh, the ACT or ACT will help you to get an admission in the US universities plus your scholarship. It uh, it basically adds to your profile, Shreesh. Yes. Uh, it it's shows that you know you can go through rigorous training for a rigorous exam, uh, and you stand out from the others based on your score. Yes. Okay, so let's let's jump with the sections. Uh, in SAT, uh, sorry, in SAT, we have a two major sections. One is English, and second is a mathematics. English again uh, divided in two parts, or as we can say, it's a subsection: reading and writing language. And second is a mathematics part. Uh, the best part of SAT in the mathematics part is you can use the calculator here. Yeah, uh, but uh, just adding to that, there are two sections to it: one with calculator, one with and one with the non-calculator. Correct. Uh, so coming to reading, uh, just wanted to add some points here. Uh, so there are four passages that will be provided to you uh, with uh, about five hundred to seven hundred words per passage that will be based on U.S. plus world literature, history, social studies, and sciences. So uh, you would have uh, to read this and answer quite a few questions. Coming to writing and language again, uh, you would be required. For four passages with eleven questions each, uh, which are uh, four hundred to five hundred words a passage, uh, where you have to express your ideas on uh, with using standard English con conventions. Uh, coming to maths, you would be given without the calculator exam. Would have fifteen multiple choice questions, uh, which are to do with algebra, problem solving, data an analytics, uh, geometry, and trigonometry, like uh, Prasad had mentioned earlier. And uh, math with calculator would be thirty multiple choice questions uh, with eight uh, with sorry uh, algebra again, problem solving, data analytics, advanced math, geometry, and trigonometry again. Uh, that being said, uh, to apply for this course, uh, currently the fees are about one hundred and four dollars, uh, with a duration like Prasad mentioned of three hours and fifty minutes. Uh, sorry, this is actually a mistake. Uh, all the exams are coming with the essay now, so. Oh, absolutely, Shri. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, so I'll just go through the sections again really quickly. Uh, reading includes four passages of 500 to 700 words based on U.S. World Lit, uh, as well as history and social studies, as well as science. Right. Uh, coming to writing and language, uh, this is based on expressing your ideas and standard English English conventions. Uh, and would it require four passages with 11 questions each. Uh, of 400 to 500 words per passage. Moving over to uh, math, you would have algebra, problem solving and data analytics, uh, advanced math, geometry, and trigonometry. And that would be the same for uh, math with a calculator, except you would have 30 questions in the calculator exam and 15 questions in the non-calculator exam. Uh, again, if you would want to apply for the coming up SAT tests, you can go over to collegeboard.com uh, where you can go ahead and register yourself and find more details on the upcoming exams. Our other specific tests of foreign languages. Uh, Dilga, I don't believe that uh, there will be a test on foreign languages. It will be on English and math. I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Yes, uh, like uh, as Aditya rightly said that uh, SAT, as is already explained about the paragraphs and the syllabus available, uh, the best thing is that you can, if you need more information on the same thing about the syllabus and about the uh, sample questions, you can always log into the website and you can see, uh, and you can always see that the latest the test, uh, mock test is available on the website. You can always download and take the exams before before you want to start in preparation with that. Now, as uh, fees is $104, if you're taking with an essay, that will increase and the duration is three hours. If you want to write and you want to go with the essay, it's three hours and 55 minutes. And the best, uh, and the website is collegeboard.org where you can find most of the information available for your exams about your test date and about the syllabus that you're going to study or you're going to take there in the SAT exam. And the validity is five years from the test date. 
and each section uh, now when we talk about the section we have a reading and we uh, sorry we have a english and a mathematics each section consists of 800 marks and the maximum is 1600 if you talk about the good score a minimum a good score will be a 1300 and the maximum can go to 1450 also and the average score will be a 1000 so like 1100 of your mathematics and english sections if you want to take the essay part that will add another 800 then the overall become 2400 if you want to go with the sat with essay the good score will be 23 uh, the uh, is the very good score will be 2300 and and good score will become 2000 so like 2100 and the average score will become 13 so like sorry 17 so like 1900 ki beech mein and you can give uh, attempts as we mentioned here five times allowed each year but as i said earlier also try to minimize that because i personally recommend any exam not to give more than four times so there is a limitation try to keep it sweet and simple and short make it at a one or two go awesome uh, just a couple of questions in the yes, chat right yes. now uh, and, uh, yeah go ahead Are the social studies question based on your years or or is is a basic things whatever you study in your high schools that is the thing that you have to go with. Uh, but uh, okay. Manthan, yeah, they are uh, somewhat based on the US. Uh, while the SAT is uh, based trying, there. doing the exam uh, internationally, uh, it's there is a bias towards uh, US based uh, social studies. But again, this will be generic, and you won't be required to know US history or US uh, uh, politics for that matter. Yes, no. As as uh, Aditi also said, there is the hints is also given at the uh, question starting. You can uh, read carefully, as we already said that. Please read the questions carefully. Then we can go with that. And yes, uh, what is the high, highest ever score? It's purely depend on the individual. Uh, like few ended with twenty three plus, few ended with twenty four also, or few ended with. Eighty sixteen hundred also, and few hundred with fifteen hundred. It's purely depend upon the individual category or individual capabilities. That that is the thing. Uh, but I believe the max score with, you can achieve is sixteen hundred, right? Yes. Yeah. It is go with the better to go with an essay or without essay. Does it make a difference? No. Like as university come up and say that they we need an essay optional. So it's purely depend on you. And before applying to the university, check their university's requirement. If the university is very particular about an essay, then yes. And if you ask me personally, yeah, I recommend you to go with an essay because you are not going to uh, write again and again because it includes cost, time, uh, and preparation. So I personally recommend to go with the essay because you are going you come you gonna complete everything in a one go. Uh. Shreesh has asked if we if we take the SAT, should we give the IELTS or TOEFL? Yes. Now SAT is an admission requirement. At the same way, IELTS or the TOEFL is an English based test. So it's it's an again important factor to give IELTS or the TOEFL either of the exams to get qualified in their universities or in their country. I think Aditi, you are the right person to answer the next question. Where can I find today's recording? Uh, I think uh, Sugandha Ma'am will be able to help us with that. I believe she'll uh, inform us at the end of the session. But uh, coming to other exams uh, only for undergraduate studies or for PG two, uh, these exams uh, are at the SET is for undergraduate studies. For PG, you have the GMAT or the GRE. Uh, oh, sorry, the SET and the ACT are for uh, undergraduate studies. Uh, yes. Coming to the IELTS or TOEFL, that is actually for both. Uh, if you have done your uh, IELTS or TOEFL within five years and you do your masters right after your undergrad, the scores will be applicable mostly. But uh, if you're doing it, you know, uh, five six years apart, then you might have to retake the test for the PG. Should we be discussing SAT? Uh, uh, would we be discussing SAT subjects? Uh, we won't be going into detail on the specific subjects in the SAT. Uh, uh, Shri, sorry. Uh, So, Mick. No, I'll I'll answer the question. Uh, yes, uh, Shri uh, said that are these exam only for undergrad studies or PG studies? Uh, yes, SAT and ACT is for your undergraduate studies, irrespective of your major. If you want to go for your higher studies for in in terms of a masters, it's again depend upon the uh, program or a major that you want to go for. If you're going for an engineering program, we recommend you to go with the GRE. If you're going with a 
management side, then we recommend you to go with an MBA program. MBA, sorry, GMAT. And uh, so this is the big difference we have. Apart from that, uh, yes, TOEFL or IELTS is a mandatory as we are applying to a country where the English is uh, their English is a primary uh, speaking country. So we have to give basic, uh, we can say basic uh, English proficiency to apply to the particular university and country. So IELTS and TOEFL is mandatory for that. In terms of UG or a PG or a PhD, you have to give that. That is a mandatory thing. It's a country requirement and the university requirement. Which exam should we take for a medical field? It's for a uh, UG or a PG. For undergrad, you can take for a, uh, ACT or a SAT. That's not a problem. Anything is fine. Awesome. Uh, there's another question. Uh, Swamik was asking about the SAT and ACT subject exams, mm -hmm. uh, the specific exams in science and so on. Uh, okay. I believe we won't be covering them today or would you be taking that up? Yes. Now we have a sad subjects available. If you want to specialize in a particular major called biology or chemistry or physics or business, the university will recommend you to go with an sad subject also. It's an added advantage if you get if you take a sad subject also. It's again purely depend upon the university requirement. If the university is insisting you to give an sad subjects, then go ahead and write the subject as also. Each subject consists of eight hundred. Most, if you're looking at the engineering part, they will look for your mathematics subject and the physics. If you're looking at a biology, then go with the math and biology. And if for a medical student, go with the biology subject. Sub 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 Before applying, try to uh, check the university requirement. You'll get a basic idea about that. Also on screen, guys, just for reference, is the scoring distribution for the SAT. Uh, you can see uh, a 90th percentile, which is the top 10% of applicants, get about a 1370. So those are the scores that Ivy Leagues generally look for. And you have different tiers for different sets of schools. So accordingly, you can uh, go ahead and understand where you should fall. But uh, as uh, Prasad had mentioned earlier, a uh, good score is anything above the 80th percentile, which is about 1270 or 1300. We'll be coming yes. to what the difference between the SAT and the ACT is, Dirka. Yes, definitely. Uh, okay, now as uh, Aditya has already mentioned about the scoring part. So uh, the grading will be uh, depend on your uh, the uh, right answers. So it's your grading, your increment will uh, be, uh, can be calculated with your 10, grade, 10 points. Right. Uh, a lot of questions coming in chat. Uh... Yes. I suggest yes. we continue with the presentation and then take the questions uh, sure, so that at least there is flow to the entire presentation. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we'll just go ahead with uh, the how to prepare section, uh, which is uh, a variety of points. Prasad, do you want to take them through? Yes. Now, uh, any exam before you write and uh, try to understand their instructions and try to read your instruction carefully. The instruction gave you the basic direction about the question, how to answer the question, and how much time is there, and uh, what is the limitation of that. So you have to answer each and everything on that part. Okay, answer the question you know first. So it's again depend upon the student, which which one he has to answer. The most important part is spend some good time before answering a question. Let's uh, like like most of the Indian students, they face a little little difficulties in the English section. But for them, the mathematics is a cakewalk. The most of the students, they, they do blunders in their English section, like reading or a passage part or a language part. So for them, uh, try to spend much time in terms of preparation or a practice in the English part. Because their vocabulary and our vocabulary is way above. So try to understand that and give as many as practice and understand the instruction available. And now. Uh, these are the few points that we have already mentioned. Yeah, prepare yourself, avoid steady marks, do not skip answers, uh, and uh, always work on your time management, which is an important factor. Uh, if, if you see in the SAT section, if you the minimum time that you spent on each question is minimum 30 seconds and maximum 90 seconds. So minimize that and work on your time management, which is an important factor here. And uh, Whichever answer or whichever question you feel that is it's easy, answer that. Now, as as we as I said that, 
uh, time management is an important factor work on that which is which will give you a advantage in attempting all the questions and as a, as we already said that there is no negative marking in any of these exams so try to answer all the questions if you have a time or a, if you are running short of the time most important attempt all the questions and practice and practice that is an important factor here as much as you practice that will increase your chances of getting a high score right uh, so coming to the differences between the act and sat prasad can you tell us a bit about that yes now now we see the difference between sat and uh, i have i have like mentioned few points here like uh, now uh, sat if if you see the mathematics section uh, uh i feel uh, in the mathematics section in act is advanced mathematics when it comes to the sat it's not that it's a basic math till your 11th standard and 12th standard uh, as i said act have a advanced mathematics it's include your algorithm and trigonometry so that is uh, something is there and most important part the second a uh, big difference is if you see at the act is one fourth uh, is one fourth of your mathematics but when it comes to sat is half of the scoring because you know like in act they have a four section one of the right. section is mathematics but when it comes to sat mathematics is a half of the section so that is a big difference and and other uh, third important uh, difference is that your time management uh, in act you spend you get a time of an average 30 se leke 60 second ke beech mein but when it comes to sat you get an average time of 30 se leke 90 second and another difference is that in act you have a maximum number of questions when it come to act you have a less question as compared to act understood uh, and, what about and, uh, and again, eligibility yes and also there is an, a difference between act and uh, sat in act you don't find any instructions related to your formulas but when it come to act in your uh, in your instruction they they give you some formula for your mathematics and so that is an advantage part for uh, for a student there and as i said uh, reading section is tough in act as compared to the sat and most important uh, before deciding or before taking a call which exam i have to take i personally recommend go to the websites try to give exam or mock test before your preparation then that will uh, it understand you which exam is best suitable for you right awesome uh so guys uh let's just go ahead and take uh, some of the questions in the chat uh, ankita had asked what grade should my son appear for the ielts or toefl he is in the 9th grade uh, i think uh, prasad you mentioned this a couple yes. of times yeah i'll tell you that uh, the most important part of ielts and toefl we have to keep in mind is that if you see the validity of this exam is 2 years after 2 years your scores get expired then there is no use of that score so they don't consider that score so the best part if you're looking at undergrad undergrad part then i recommend you to write your ielts exam once you complete your 11th standard because the validity of that exam is 2 years but when it comes to sat the validity is 5 years right uh, next one is is the application process a spring admission process very different no is the same thing the only difference is that number of uh, uh, seats and when it comes to the intake we are an international students uh, for us the fall intake is a big intake so we have everything available irrespective of the majors you have a high number of seats scholarships and acceptance ratio is high and all the universities which is most important all the universities are open in terms of the major for fall intake right uh, i personally feel that fall intake is an ideal intake for an international student right uh, i believe uh, you mentioned a good point which is that uh, there's few universities that have intakes in the spring so it, it does narrow your options but uh, again if it depends on when you want to apply and if the schools you want to apply to have their intakes then then it shouldn't be that different yes um uh, what is the difference between sat and act i've already mentioned few points we just covered yeah yes. uh coming to the next one i have taken the ib hl uh, ib english hl so should i take the ielts or toefl can i get it waived uh 
uh, anang uh, anaga uh, you'll have to check with your schools so it doesn't work uh, in the way that you just take your ib english teacher and it's accepted worldwide you'll have to check with the school if this is something that they accept often times they will uh, sometimes there might be a case that they say that you still need to take your ielts or the toefl exam depending on which school it is so uh, it's always best to check in with the school uh, once but uh, considering that you've taken the ib english teacher you should be very prepared for the ielts and toefl already Rightly said. Before applying, please see the English language requirement on the website. Then uh, they they clearly mention if you're not finding any information, uh, you, you you feel free to write an email to the university. They'll sorry your question on that. Uh, next is uh, how to apply for the ACT. Uh, I'll just go back to the slide. Aditya, just give me a second. Does the SAT have negative markings? Not anymore, Dhruva. In twenty six, before twenty sixteen, they did, but uh, since then they've removed negative markings. Uh, any suggested learning material for SAT, Prasad? Yes, uh, there is a book called Barons, and uh, Princeton is also available. You can check both the books. These are the best books for your SAT preparations. I believe I also use Barons itself. Yes. It's yeah. It's you been uh, long-standing. Yes, you can use the official uh, Princeton uh, the book and uh, Barons. These are these are the two best book to go for your SAT preparations. And go with the latest edition. Can you just uh, spell the books that you mentioned, Aditya and Prasad? I think yes. Uh, Barons. Can you just put it in the chat also? Yes. I'm just okay. putting that. I think Aditya is chatting. I believe it's Princeton Review, right? Uh, yes, yes, the Princeton Review. All right. Uh, put it in the chat. Uh, just coming down to the questions. We're just catching up with all the questions. Yeah, sorry if I'm missing out questions that are just coming in. Uh, but uh, apart from SAT or ACT scores, will some extra language certification enhance my profile from Shrish? Uh, yes. If if you want to specialization in a particular language, then go with that. Otherwise, it's not required. If, um, if you want to, if you want to specialize in a special language called Chinese or Italian or it, uh, or a French, then go. Otherwise, not required. But Shrish, uh, if you're applying, it depends also on the country you're applying to. For example, uh, I did my masters in Spain, and there having a second language really makes it easier for you to get into that school. Even though the course is taught in English, uh, it just gives that university, like we said, said giving showing them that. They can be confident in you is important. So learning their uh, local language uh, gives you that one up that you know another international student won't have, which is you can actually integrate yourself within their society or their culture. So yeah, it depends on place to place. Yes, even even the Germany need a German language, a basic German language, or an intermediate or advanced language. So look at the country that you're targeting, then go with a language. Otherwise, not required. Absolutely. Uh, how do you apply for the ACT? Uh, Aditya, I definitely will get back to that. Uh, I'll just show it to you towards the end. I'll put it in the chat as well for you to pick it up. What materials do we have to study for SAT and ACT? Uh, so I think SAT we've just shared. ACT, any suggestions, Prasad? Uh, yes, you can go to the website. They there you can find the ACT related books there. So they, they have also to... offer a variety of test prep materials yes. for free but, on but, their website itself. Uh, yes, but I personally feel that ACT, they, they, well, please refer their official books. But then yeah. they have basic knowledge or in-depth knowledge about the test. Right, Rupali. Uh, TOEFL and IELTS validity. Uh, they uh, ideally you should be giving it uh, sometime in the eleventh grade. As Prasad has mentioned, uh, this gives you enough time. Eleventh or twelfth grade is uh, the right time because that gives you enough time to have your test valid, as they're only valid for two years. How to apply for the SAT and ACT? Uh, I'll just send across the links to you. Uh, Amay, for the October SAT, you can go ahead and check out the website link. I'll just take you to the website uh, page. So collegeboard.org, I'll just put in the chat for you, is for the SAT. And uh, And for the uh, ACT, it's myact.org. Uh, 
uh, you can go ahead and register uh, for either of the courses through their official channels. There, that's the only way you can register for them. Uh, and yeah, you'll be able to see the upcoming test dates for these as well, right there. And as Prasad mentioned, for both of them, there's free test prep material on both their websites. Uh, a lot of things to get you started. But as you mentioned, there are uh, better uh, guides as well, like the Barons or the Princeton Review, which uh, give you a more de- in-depth analysis. And obviously, it's not free, which is why they have a lot more questions, a lot more uh, 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 backlog of questions. I think, Aditya, we can say a few more questions. Do they take, yeah. uh, the say, as an extra? Uh, no, it's not. They don't take as an extra. They see your uh, English there, language skills there. So yeah. it's always advantage to go with an essay, as I, as I mentioned earlier. So don't, it's not an extra. It, it's it's part of the exam, and they they consider the essays also, which is an important aspect there. And I think uh, I think Rupali, ma'am, uh, have like she has some technical issues there. Yes. The validity of TOEFL and IELTS is two years. The best time to take this exam once you complete your 11th and to 11th standard. You can write in the month of June or July. Anything is available. So dates are available. Plenty of dates are available for IELTS and TOEFL. So book the date and give the exam. And the ideal time is 11th standard. Right. Uh, is the SAT online or offline? Uh, I believe it's only offline. Uh, and the same with the ACT as, as well. Uh, I don't believe that they either have uh, options to submit it offline, but uh, I believe they are taking the best precautions they can to ensure that students are spaced enough and there are social distancing norms in place. Uh, yeah. Any thoughts on this, Prasad? Which, which one? Sorry. On, uh, are the, is the SAT online or offline? Yes, they are the offline, as you rightly mentioned. Uh, there is a one question from Sushil. Sirish, can a uh, ninth grade a grader take mock test for? Yes, mock is for to understand how 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 need to prepare for that exams. That will judge yourself whether you need to uh, practice more or you have you you want a tutor or not. It's purely depend on you whether you want to go ahead with your self-preparation or you have to take somebody's help on that part. So mock will give you an analyze. Where are you standing? I think that is, that's, that's for my end for that part question. How can ninth graders who want to go ahead study? Uh, Shishan, can you be a bit uh, more specific? Uh, do you want to learn more about test prep? Are you trying to uh, uh, go ahead and apply to study abroad? I'm, I'm a bit uh, lost in the question. I believe it's on test prep. Is there a specific test that you're referring to? Yes. Uh, how a ninth grader who want to go ahead with the study? Uh, yes, you can do that. If you're preparing well in advance, that's that's always go- good on that part. Um, coming to Ankita's question, is there any such test for the EU universities? Uh, I believe the SAT might be required for some of them, Prasad. Uh, is there yes, any... yes. But ACT would not be applicable for them. Yes. Uh, there are a couple of... Are there any institutes for preparation for these various exams? Check, See, check there the, are. Check, yes, there are. There are so many. On if, What kind of a mode that you want to opt? If, if you want to go with an online or offline, and check the see and uh, check in your local cities which are the best one then you can opt for that you have, you can find plenty of options available for your online if you want to go with offline yes check the cities near you or check the centers near you and you can always take a call on that part absolutely uh, awesome apart from SATs, any other test required and for the uk uh, ankita yes. i believe SATs and uh, IELTS or TOEFL would be the ones, right? Yes. Only the language, apart from the SAT. Yeah. Uh, do these exams take place only once a year? No, uh, Chavri, uh, they happen quite often. Uh, they are varying now quite uh, drastically because of COVID. But uh, all the information will be on the two websites that I've shared with you uh, for the respective exams. So you'll be able to find the closest upcoming one for, to you. Uh, Dhruva is interested in doing a BBA. Do I prefer doing it in India or abroad? So, uh, I mean, from my experience, Dhruva, uh, 
going abroad gives you a different experience from studying in India. Uh, that being said, it depends on your future goals. And ISB might be uh, a better fit for you if you're trying to, you know, get into a Marico or get into a Deloitte uh, in India, right? Uh, if you're trying to work abroad and if you want to settle abroad, then maybe studying abroad is a better option. So it does depend. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you uh, have some more uh, specifics on what you're interested in doing with your BBA, uh, I can maybe give you some more thoughts on that. Hardik is asking best place to graduate US or India or Europe. Uh, personally, I would say Europe. Uh, I did my IB in India, master's in Europe and uh, undergrad in the US. Uh, I personally preferred Europe uh, most of all. But uh, Prasad, what is your take yeah, on this I, question? I want to add a few points here. It's again depend upon the majors that you want to specialization. If, if you want to go with a management, yeah. then as that, Aditya rightly said, Europe is an ideal place. If you want to specialize in information technology or computer science, then the US is the right place. Uh, or uh, if you want to specialize in automobile industry, then Germany is an ideal place. So Sorry. depend on your major, select the country. See the prospect you available in that particular country in terms of your major. And everything is available in all the countries, so do not worry. Though, and I want to add a few points, a difference between India or abroad. Uh, the uh, it, if you look at the uh, broader perspective, the value of that uh, Western country degree give you a high mileage in compared to the Indian degree. I'm not uh, saying that the Indian degree is not valid, it's there. But you know, like you will give a global perspective there and the degree is globally recognized and you, you, you will be studying in the best place and the best university and you will be competing the, with the best minds in, the, in that particular country. This can depend upon the country. It's not like that. But the big difference is the exposure. The kind of exposure that you get in that Western countries is way above. And if we see the difference between, uh, the major difference is they are more into the practical education. So it's an important factor, one of the important factors to be considered if you want to study really in the Western countries or in India. How to do medicine in Germany? Uh, again, yes, you have to decide again. And now you have to see the requirement of the particular university. Now, the medicine is available in most of the universities in Germany. Before you apply, check with the requirements, then apply for the medicines there. As we have two types of institutions available in Germany, public and private. Public is being operated by the uh, government. So most of the public university, their fees is very reasonable. When it comes to a private institution, their fees are very high. So check before that and check the programs available in that particular university and then take a call on that part. Uh, so Suganda has asked, uh... Uh, is uh, so she has a friend who has uh, done an attempt of the SAT and uh, was not a good score. So will they uh, will they be able to submit a blind score as uh, uh, the date for the application to that university is before the SAT date? So what do we recommend? What is the num What is the score that she did? She mention any question? Uh... Score no, there. she hasn't mentioned a score, but she's not happy with the score. So they don't want to submit it's a, it's this. It depends upon what is that. If you compare the scores with 1400 or 1500, you definitely feel bad that your score is low. Look, there are good number of universities. Uh, uh, I think the question more is, should they submit a blind score or uh, not at this point? Um, uh, it, no, don't submit them. Right. Uh, it, it's more, it, it's it's definitely uh, recommended to be completely truthful because uh, having a reject from university, especially while giving falsified information will really uh, tarnish your reputation with that university. So uh, if you can defer your application to maybe the spring semester or, uh, uh, or if it's already spring, then maybe to the fall semester, it would be ideal. Don't you think, Prasad? Yes. As, as you said rightly, you can defer your admission and then you can re-attempt for your exams again. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you can submit your new course to the university. Uh, so where where uh, would we recommend uh, Soham to go? He's looking at USA, UK, Germany. 
he wants to pursue aeronautical engineering and he has a british citizenship already so that would be an advantage for him if it's the uk definitely because you are a citizen there so you have an added advantage that you'll be uh, in state or your tuition fees will be very reasonable but again like as you said that you want to pursue your aeronautical engineering first analyze your profile then target the universities once you target the universities check the core curriculum that's offered by the universities compare the Absolutely. core curriculum between us uk or germany see where you where, where is your area of interest is standing then okay. again then try for that as if you ask me personally if you are a uk citizen then go with the uk then uh but uh, i i believe us and german schools are better for aeronautical Definitely. engineering in itself so uh, i mean it depends uh, on your uh, needs also so i think like uh, prasad said if fees uh, are something that you're looking at uh, studying in the uk would give you that advantage of being a citizen and having lower fees but if you do have the option of choosing a better university uh, put don't put all your eggs in one basket apply to the uk apply to the us and germany see if your us germany admits are way higher ranked and if that's something that you know you believe in terms of a career will give you a boost which it definitely will but it depends on whether you want to work outside the uk also uh, but yeah a lot of factors to consider uh, i would say don't put all your eggs in one basket and look at a variety of options which country is the best for studying psychology all the countries <laughs> because now which which specialization in psychology that you want to pursue because psychology is also again a big major there are there are many uh, sub sections is also available in that right uh US, us is a good place even the uk is a good place canada is also a good place for the psychology you can decide and take a call on that part right uh Pratik is asking which country can you do an MTech abroad? Uh, usually, uh, there is no MTech. We we call that MS program or an MBA program or M engineering program. Right. So it's it's equivalent to the MS. It's again depend. There are so many factors available. So you have to uh, shortlist the country. Then you have to narrow down the options related to the program. Then see the uh, your future prospect in that particular country. and apart from that one of the major factors is the cost look at the cost of that particular country in that particular program then that will give a basic idea which country is the best for you i as as i earlier said depend upon your major select the country as per your major which will play an uh, important part and that will give a high mileage for your future I think a good uh, way to also look at it is to see which industries are doing uh, best in those countries. Like for example, Germany is uh, known for its automobiles and known for its engineering marvels. So it's a great uh, prospect for any engineer. Uh, and the colleges also do produce uh, students of that caliber, which is why you know the industries are booming. So similarly for other countries, uh, even understanding what economy, what their economy thrives on, is a great way to find a good university. That is the most important. You invest so much of money. if you didn't get your return of investment that there is no point of that so that is an important factor what are the future prospect is available and how many industries are there for the particular major that you major in the particular universities and see the placements in the particular universities that's an important part right uh what about human resources management uh, prasad would yes. you have any suggestions for hr yes there are options available and it comes into the management and again depend upon the country uh, you you can always pick a major there is a hr is also available in, across the universities and across the country so that's not a problem there uh so when i mentioned that her friend score was 1200 uh, i believe that's uh, a little above median so uh, any suggestions that prasad yes to if, if you see at a general perspective 1200 is not a bad score yeah. when you compare your 1200 score with a 1500 or 600 then you definitely feel bad now i i assume that she has taken sat then she must be targeting for uh, united states of america look uh, there are plenty of universities available in us so there are universities which accept you to 100 also and there are few good number of universities they don't consider or they don't require a gre uh, sorry sat also on that part so in my opinion sat is is a decent score so go ahead and apply there is a good chances to get an admission as well as the scholarship part also so. uh 
Dharma Raya has asked, will they be giving any syllabus? Dharma, I'm not uh, too clear on the question. If you could maybe elaborate a bit more, we'd be happy to take it up. Uh, coming to Sujata, can we apply in college with only a TOEFL score if we have not given the essay? I believe we've answered this. Uh, yes, you can. There are universities that are waiving it. But again, as Prasad had mentioned earlier, uh, giving the essay only makes you seem more competitive. Uh, can, compared to other applicants who might not have. So again, you coming in without an SAT score will make you not seem as competitive as those that have given it. But that doesn't mean that uh, the university might not like your profile and might not uh, pick you, right? Which country can I recommend HRM we spoke about? Uh, awesome. Uh, how do I specialize in a particular language? Uh, can you, again, I, be more specific? I feel like this is a, a, a tricky one because uh, my answer to this is you need to be able to speak it proficiently. Uh, if you can converse with somebody at an emotional level, if you can, uh, you know, have a full conversation with them, I think uh, you can comfortably say that uh, you are specialized. But again, this has to be a fluent conversation and can't be a narrated conversation, right? Are there any diploma courses that people can apply to? Any good prospects for them? Yes, as again, depend upon the country that you are looking at. Uh, this is which diploma that you want to talk. You talk, want to talk about. Uh, diploma after your 12th standard, what is that? Can you be specific on that part? Yeah, but that would really help. Yes. Diploma after 12th. Yes. Look, uh, yes. Uh, if, if we talk about Canada, they, they offer PG diploma courses. So they offer a diploma courses in a variety of courses. So it's much available. You can do the diploma after your 12th standard also. Apart from that, there is an associate degree in the United States of America, which is for two years, you can also pursue that. So yes, diploma is much available. All Absolutely. right. Are there any further questions on the floor? Aditya, Prasad, for you guys directly? Nothing Nothing in the chat at this point. So I think uh, we've covered uh, almost all of them. Anything yeah. that maybe you have uh, that you want to ask, Suganda? I, I know you were asking a couple. <laughs> no, I think I asked the one that I wanted to. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think there were some great questions and thank you for the answers. Uh, I, I believe there is uh, there's something else that you all want to talk about. So let's just quickly jump on, jump on to that. Will do. Uh, so guys, uh, like we mentioned, this was about the ACT, SAT, but we do have a variety of other workshops happening. Uh, one of them is on test prep and we'll be getting speakers from uh, Kaplan as well as uh, other test prep agencies as well as universities abroad. So uh, coming action 16th, 17th and 18th, we have every day four sessions happening. Uh, there's a link right here. I'll be putting in the chat as well for you to take a look at. Uh, you can register for a specific session if you, you are interested. And these will be speakers from a variety of universities across the world. So you can get a chance to ask them questions, maybe get some inside scoops on their specific universities. And this includes uh, the likes of Temple, uh, uh, NYU, and a variety of other universities around the world. Right. Uh, that's about it uh, for the most part. Uh, if you'd like to share any feedback, you can using this link. Uh, Finally, uh, there's a WhatsApp group also if you guys are interested with counselors on board that you can have questions asked from. And yeah, you can also go ahead. I know a lot of you had a lot of questions. You can go ahead and reach out to us at any point if you do have any. Uh, but that being said, uh, yeah, I think that's about it, Suganda. Thank you so much for your time.